gathered in his name to worship. This is your praise and worship time. Let's sing it.
that God woke you up this morning. How many glad he started you on your way? Come on, shout it out. Hey, he woke me up.
You are blessed because you're in the house of God. But there's somebody out there struggling. There's somebody out there that needs some help. There's somebody out there that needs the word of God. So go to the Emmanuel Christian Center page, hit the share the video. It's gonna go out and be a blessing to somebody. Then the anointing of the Holy Spirit takes over and ministers to somebody's life. So thank you for sharing that video. God bless you today. Father, we are give you all the praise, all the praise. We thank you for the work that will be done today. We thank you for the souls that will be saved. We thank you for the healing that will go forth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkin. Well, God is good. I'm so glad that you're here. What a great day it is. Let's just put our hands together and just give the Lord a praise. Oh, the Lord's been good. You in the house of the Lord, we just come to worship, to magnify, to praise the Lord because the Lord is good. Raise your hands and let's pray together. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. So we come to worship, magnify and praise you because the Lord has been good. We come to say thank you. We come to say thank you and ask for supernatural help. Somebody just shout help in Jesus name. Lead us and guide us and help us. In Jesus name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. We want all of our children, if you're under the age of 25, come on and stand at the altar. We want to pray for you, all of our kids. We love our children at Emmanuel Christian Center. I want to ask Minister Darren, neither you up here, come and lead us in prayer this morning. So glad that you're here on this wonderful day. God is a good God. He loves you, and everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If we can just all uh, put our hands toward our children. Father God, you said the children are our heritage. So, Father, we just lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. We cover them with your blood, Lord God, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord Jesus. Father, we lift them up, Lord God, and ask, Lord, that you would continue, Lord God, to work in the hearts and the minds of our children. Holy Spirit, lead them and guide them in the ways of righteousness. Cover them, Lord God, as they at school and at play, Lord God. Lord, they need your help, Lord God. Each and every day, Lord. Lord, you have already ordered their steps. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they will begin to walk out, Lord God, the steps that you have already ordered for them, Lord God. Lord, that they will walk in prosperity. Father, that they will walk in victory that every yoke and every shackle that is around their necks that the enemy will try to bring against them we cast it out in the name of Jesus we bind every spirit every evil spirit every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus and cast it back to the pits of hell where it belongs our children are destined for victory they are destined for greatness so Father we thank you for our children Open up their minds and their eyes and their spiritual ears to hear your voice, God. That they may know you when they hear you, Lord God. And they will call up, up, call up unto you, Lord God. You say, call up unto thee and you will hear them, God. And you will cover them and you will keep them and you will bless them. Every step of the way, God, move them forward in, in elementary school and, and middle school and, and high school and on to college, Lord God, and on into adulthood, Lord God, where they will work and do your work in your kingdom, God. They will be productive citizens of society. God, that they will prosper and live and not die. God, we thank you for them. And we just give you praise. We give you glory for them, God. Lord, we pray for the parents, Lord God. We ask that you would give the parents the strength and the wisdom and the knowledge. Lord, in the compassion, Lord God, to raise up their children in the way they should go, God. In the admonition of you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just thank you for them. And we give you praise. We give you glory. Touch them, Lord God. From the youngest to the oldest, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you for them. They are a blessing. And we just want to be a blessing to them, God. And they will honor you in all that they do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Raise your hands with me and everybody say, let's pronounce the blessing. 
As a parent, you got to pronounce the blessing over your children. Everybody say, Lord, Lord we, pronounce we pronounce the blessing, the blessing. over our children. our children. Come on, say it one more time. Say, Lord, Lord we pronounce, pronounce the, blessing the blessing over our children. Our children. They, are they are blessed. Yeah. Say it again. They are, they are blessed. blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness. Our young children may be dismissed at this time. God is good.
somebody to shout higher. Come on, higher. The blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. You got something in your life you want to put under the blood. Just raise your hands right where you are. You got something in your life you want to put it under the blood. Raise your hand with me and everybody say, Lord, we plead the blood over our lives. Come on, one more time. Say, Lord, we plead the blood over our lives. The blood, the blood of Jesus. Now just give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated this morning as first lady give us the announcement. Thank you for the blood. Well, good morning, everyone. So good to see you. Blessings of the Lord upon you. Our little children have already been dismissed, but our youth will stay until right before the message because they're serving today. Isn't it good to have our youth serving in the house of God? So we're excited about that. Are you here for the very first time? If you're a visitor today, you've never been here before, we want to welcome you. Just kind of lift your hand up. We have a flyer, a brochure that we would love to give you that will tell you a little bit more about our church and it will give you all the information to contact us if you have questions. Just take that, fill it out, give it to an usher, and we would love to be in contact with you. Let's give them another hand of welcome for any visitors that we have today. Don't forget to reach out. Look, ushers, do have our reach out cards, our outreach cards. We are reaching out to the world with the love of Jesus Christ. How do you reach somebody? Tell them your story. Tell them what Jesus means to you, how your life has changed, how your life has been transformed, the peace that you have, even though the world is in disarray, but you have peace and just share the gospel with them. They will want to hear what is going on in your life. Thank you for that. Um, next Saturday, the roadmap to college. How many people have children in high school or college or family and friends? They're going to need financial help going to college. Well, this roadmap to college is going to lay out all of the things that are available to you, forms you should fill out, deadlines you need to meet. Make sure that you go out to the table in the foyer. Uh, Sister Esther and Brother John will be out at the table to sign you up. Yeah, this is they do this out of the love of their hearts to share. They sent their kids to school with zero debt. That's unheard of. So you want to go by the table and find out what is available for you to send your children to college. You want to know now. Even if they're a sophomore in college, you want to start to know now. And they're going to serve you breakfast. How nice is that? So go by and sign up so that you can receive the benefit of this roadmap to college training. Well, God bless you today. Well, oh, no, no, no. Wednesday. This dynamic choir. Oh, my goodness. They are on fire. They are bringing it. And so they were rehearsing yesterday. I had to come in and just film them for a little bit because they sound so good. So Wednesday, you get to come out, sit down, and just enjoy the singing and the worship and the music and bring somebody. Somebody needs to be lifted in their spirit on Wednesday night. Why are we doing this? We're leaning into our anniversary. Everybody say anniversary time. You probably can't believe it because I can't believe it. We've been here 18 years, 18 years. Wow, time has flown. I remember some of you kids were just little tiny babies and now you're 18 and, and up. So it's amazing. But so this Wednesday is the musical. You want to be there for that. And then Sunday is the anniversary. We have guests coming in all the way from Michigan and they are going to minister to us, minister our pastor Terrence and Chantel Hawkins all the way from Michigan and they are going to be a blessing. So you don't want to miss either one of those. So put it on your calendar. God bless you. Here is our pastor, Pastor Alvin Simpkins. Amen. God is good. So you don't want to miss it. You want to be here. God is going to bless you. Somebody say amen. Amen. God has a word for you, and we want to encourage you to do all that you can to bring somebody, to encourage somebody to come out. Somebody say amen. The weather will be better, and, uh, but I'm just glad that you are here. Somebody say amen. 
God loves you, and everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Don't forget, men, in the morning at 5.30, we'll be on our Zoom call. You need to be there, and just know the Lord is going to help you, and he's going to bless you. If you got something that you want to tell God thank you for, just stand up with me. If you got something you want to just tell God thank you, if you just want to say thank you, Lord, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. If you got something you want to thank the Lord for, just tell him thank you. Raise your hands with me all over the house and say, Lord, thank you for all your blessings. I am blessed. Come on, say it one more time. Say, Lord, thank you for all your blessings. I am blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Would you welcome the choir as Minister Teresa sing, thank you, Lord. Don't ever get to the place where you don't give God thanks. Somebody say amen. Amen. God bless you. Just another number with a tragic end, but you didn't see. 
Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Somebody say, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you owe him a thanks. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your blessings. We are blessed. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for all your blessings in my life. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, I appreciate all your blessings in my life. I am, I am blessed. blessed. Say it again. I am, I am blessed. blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Take your Bible this morning. At this time we dismiss all of our youth. We just want to thank God for you. Don't forget, be here for our anniversary on Sunday. And be here for the choir celebration on Wednesday night. God's going to bless your life. Amen. He's trying to move you forward in a good way. The Lord is on your side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. Oh, say it again. The Lord is on my side. Take your Bible and go with me to Matthew chapter 16 this morning. What a great day it is to be in the house of the Lord. Elbow somebody and say, I'm glad to see you. Oh, I'm glad to see you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Glad to be here. Somebody say amen. Matthew chapter 16. If you have it, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew chapter 16. If you have it, say amen. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 two and three please read i've asked my wife to read for us this morning the pharisees also with the sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven yes he answered and said unto them uh -huh. when it is evening ye say it will be fair weather for the yes. sky is red yes and in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering uh-huh oh ye hypocrites you can discern the face of the sky but can you not discern the signs of the times? Raise your hands and let's pray. Everybody serve me. Say, Lord, teach me how to supernaturally discern the times. I am blessed. Say it one more time. Declare it over your life. I am blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God bless you. You must have eyes to see and eyes to discern what the Lord is doing in your life. Lord, open our eyes that we might see. That we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That we will have divine foresight. We will see tomorrow, today, and move our lives forward. Somebody say forward. In, in 2023, we sh Lord, open my eyes that I might see. You don't want to go through life blind. you come too far not to be able to see that God is on your side. It takes supernatural perception to be able to see some things in your life, but you have to know the Lord wants you to, to be able to see how to move your life forward, how to get everything bad behind you and just go forward because you know the Lord is on your side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. The Holy Ghost will show you things to come, but we must be people that, be, that must be prayerful, asking God for help, and we must do all that we can to live on the prophetic edge of knowing that the Lord is on my side, that God is my help and my shield, that you are a people that know that tomorrow is on my side because the Lord is my help. Somebody just shout, help! Jesus did not want his disciples to be blind. He did not want them to be uh, uh, people that did not have insight and foresight. So he used this parable to teach them about the Pharisees and how blind they were. Jesus called, and if you go forward now to uh, chapter number 23, he called them blind guides. Blind guides. He called them blind guides. That they were just blind. They didn't have no perception. But you have to know, your, your future belongs to your ability to discern that God is on my side. That God is on my side. Somebody say, God is on my side. 
discernment is spiritual insight and foresight where you see tomorrow you declare that i perceive the lord is working in my life it is the realm of the supernatural where you have to ask god to show me somebody say show me show me lord we see that this will help all of us as christians if we will walk by faith and not by what sight the bible says in second samuel chapter 5 and verse number 12 and david perceived that the lord had established him over israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people israel's sake he perceived that he discerned that god was working in his life you got to discern the lord is working in, in my life how many of you can discern today that the lord is working in my life oh god if you are here in this nine degree weather the lord is working in your life if you are here in this cold snowy weather let me help you the lord is working in your life it was the lord that woke you up it was the Lord that got you out of that warm bed. It was the Lord that told you to get dressed and come to the house of the Lord. The devil would have said, sleep in. You can go next Sunday when it's going to be warmer. But you got up and came and that's the Lord. Somebody said, that's the Lord working. It's the Lord working in your life. Discernment is the ability to see and to hear and to become aware of something through the spiritual senses. You know, you sense it. And you, 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 can, you know that you know that you know. The Lord is working. Somebody say, the Lord is working. It is discernment. It is spiritual recognition. It is spiritual recognition. It is spiritual forecasting. Looking ahead. And that's why Jesus said, you can discern the face of the sky. And you can forecast the sky. But you cannot discern the signs of the time. And we must be people that are able to discern the signs of the time. That we must have spiritual comprehension and know that God is going to work it out. He's going to turn your daughter's life around. He's going to turn that son's life around. He's going to turn those kids around. He's going to help you pay the bill. You just got to keep walking by faith and not by what? Sight. You're not going to see it all the time. That's why you got to pray. Open my eyes that I might see. This is not the time to live as blind guides. This is not the time to be a blind mom. This is not the time to be a blind dad. This is not the time to be a blind wife. This is not the time to be a blind husband. You got to be able to see. That the Lord is on my side. Somebody said the Lord is on my side. It is eternal observation. I can see it. I can't put my hand on it, but I can sense it. I can see it. And I know that God is at work. Somebody said the Lord is at work. You know, and that's when you say some, something told me. How many, how many of you ever said something told me? I knew, I knew that the Lord was going to work it out. Something told me. I had a dream. I had a vision. I, I had a, an insight. I just believed that God was going to work it out. That is discernment. We must be people that are not blind, that we are able to discern the Lord is working in our lives. Somebody said the Lord is working in our lives. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus scolded the Pharisees and Sadducees. For their ability to predict the weather, but not the times, not the sign of the times, that they were just guys that were just going through life. But you have to know, God wants you to be able to discern that everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. If you keep walking by faith, if you keep coming to church Sunday after Sunday, every time the doors are open, you show up at God's house then you'll be amazed at the end of the year, you'll be so much better off. You have to discern that my faith is going to take me somewhere. And then you got to work your faith. Somebody say, work your faith. I'm working my faith when I got up at an eight degree weather and came to church. I'm working my faith as a pastor. I'm working my faith that the Lord is at work. Somebody say, help. I'm working my faith when I pray every day and say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, help. I'm working my faith. When I pick up my Bible and read it, 
throughout the week and say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Don't let me be blind. Somebody say amen. So as people of God, we must be able to see. Can't you see, single lady, that that guy is no good for you? Can't you see, single man, that that lady is no good for you? She's a diva. Let me leave that alone. Y'all looking at me funny. She's not a wife. Some women are just women. And some women are wives. And there's a whole different level. Some women are divas. And they are not wives. You can't take a diva and make her a housewife. Oh, let me leave that one alone. You, can, you, you can't take a, 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 a pimp and make him a house husband. Can't you see that he's gone from woman to woman to woman? Now he shows up at your door and you think, I'm going to change him. Oh, no, you're not. Look at neighbor and say, can't you see? Can't you see? And the enemy will blind you. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world has blinded their mind. He will blind you to thinking that you are bad enough and good enough to change a person who has been doing the same thing for years. It takes the power of God. It takes the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Slow your roll and say, Lord, show me what I'm getting involved in. Show me. Show me what I'm getting involved in before you wreck yourself and mess up your kid's life. Somebody say amen. Some men are men and they're not fathers. You need a father for your son. You need a father for your daughter. You don't need just a guy. Somebody say amen. Some of our, our kids need fathers. So single man, you, you, you need to be a dad. Single lady, you need to, be a, you need to have a, a, a father in your life. Don't get with a guy just because he's a man. Let me leave. Y'all got quiet on me. Let me leave that alone. You got to have a father. Our kids today need fathers. Every day they are dying. They are dying in the streets all across our nation. Lord, we need men that will raise their kids. Somebody say, the blood. Come on, help me holler. The blood. The blood over our children. When little boys bring nine millimeters loaded to school and shoot a teacher in the hand. Where is the father? A real father protect his guns. Let me help you men. I, I don't know how I got Holy Ghost. You got to help me get back on track. A real father, if you got guns, you're going to protect your guns. You're going to lock them up. You're going to protect them from your kids because you know a kid doesn't know the value of a gun. Somebody say amen. You're not going to leave your rifle sitting over in the corner. A kid going to go get that rifle and try and shoot it like you. Somebody say help. So we need to discern that we are living in the last days. We need to discern that these are times when we need to be in church. These are times when we need God's help. These are times when we can't make it by ourselves. These are times when we lean not into our own understanding. But in all of our ways we do what? Acknowledge him and he shall. Oh, he'll direct your path. Raise your hand. Let's pray about it. Everybody say, Lord, open my eyes that I might discern right from wrong. In Jesus' name we pray. How do we develop our spiritual discernment and perception? How do we develop it? How do we develop it? We must do all that we can. To be men and women that develop our discernment, that we discern and that we can sense it and we can see it and we can know it before it happens. And then when it happens, it's, you are not surprised by it. Number one, three ways. I only have time for three ways. Three ways to discern and develop your discernment and perception. Number one is meditate on the word. No, oh, some of y'all think that the Bible is just for days gone by. No, the Bible is relevant when today. The Bible makes a difference in our lives today. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our what? Path. You got to know the word. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God lights your pathway. 
The word of God lights your steps. The word of God lights your direction where you're going. It shines light to where you're going. You can see when other people mess up their lives, you are still serving the Lord. You are still marching ahead. You are still paying your bills. You are still being blessed by the Lord because you can see. Somebody say, I can see. We are able to see with special discernment, with special perception. We are able to see that we're not blindsided, that we're not caught off guard, that we're not living with blinders on. We are able to see. Somebody say, I can see. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You got to live your life with your eyes open. Somebody say, my eyes are open. You got to live your life with your eyes open. Many people try to live their lives by themselves. They try to live their lives on their own terms, on their own thinking, with their own mindset, and their own way of doing things. But the Bible says, lean not unto your what? Own understanding. Your mind will trick you. Your mind will play games on you. It'll tell you nobody in the church likes you. That's a lie. It's a lie. It'll tell you there ain't no reason to go to church. It's a lie. That's a devil lying to you. It'll tell you it's too cold to go out there. But guess what? In the morning when that alarm go off, you got to be at that job. You're going to get up, get that car running, and you're going to be down the road to your job. Your mind will lie to you. But if you're going to be a person of deception, a person of, excuse me, discernment and not deception, you got to understand the word of God in your life. The Bible is right. Somebody say, the Bible is right. Because when we read the word, when the word of God hits the soil of your heart, we are nothing but dirt. That's why at every funeral, we say, the last thing we say is ashes to ashes and dust to dust. From dust, mankind has come. From dust, mankind shall return. When, when the word of God hits the soil of your heart, it will cause your life to grow. It will cause you to be able to discern what is best for you. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And we have to know the word of God helps us to forecast what our future is going to be. If you stay in church, if you keep coming, by the end of the year, your life will be so much better. Let me help you. By the end of the year, your life will be better. You'll have more blessings. You'll have more money. How many of you better off now than you were this time last year? Why? Because you will stay in God's house. He says, my eyes will be open and my ears will be attent to the prayers made in this place. When you come to God's house, it, God hears your prayers. God listens to your prayers. He's watching you pray. That's why you, when you're going through a difficult time, come to God's house and say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, hell. hell, we must have discernment and see tomorrow, today, that the Lord is on our side. Somebody say, the Lord is on our side. We must be meteorologists from a spiritual perspective. The meteorologists, they can look out and see a storm coming a week or three weeks away. They can tell you, you better get ready. The storm is coming. Somebody say, amen. And we must be people that discern that, I, that, that good things are coming to my life. We must be people that discern that if I keep doing this, bad things going to happen in my life. We must forecast and we must see it by the word of the Lord that God is on my side. Somebody say, God is on my side. The future resides within yourself, within your heart. And Luke 17, 21, Luke 17, 21, neither shall they say low here or low there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. And you got to call on God for help. Lord, I need your help. That's why the Bible tells us in Ephesians 3, 29, the him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh where? In us. You got it in you. That's why you got to stir it up. Somebody say, stir it up. Say it again, stir it up. Sometimes you got to stir it up, and you got to stir it up by the word of God. It helps us to have discernment in our lives that we must see tomorrow, today. 
and he'll show you things to come. You'll not be blindsided, and you'll know what is best for your life. You'll know that you know that you know that you know. You'll know that you know that you know that you what? Uh, no. Some things you just know. I just know the church is the best thing to happen for families. Oh, I know a lot of families have left the church. You know, in this hour, red families, black families, white families, brown, they've left the church. But it's the greatest vehicle to help you with your children, to help you keep a sane and balanced life. It's one of the greatest vehicles to help you to keep your family together. Somebody say amen. I know people that got mad, got hurt in the church and left the church, and their life is a wreck. Y'all know them. But I made up my mind, I'm going to stay in the house. I ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Nobody's going to run me out of, they tried to run me out of God's house. Years ago, as a 17-year-old boy, I was playing football at the University of Tulsa, and the old people said, baby, you going to hell? Out there in that world. I was just trying to get an education. Because I asked the Lord and he gave me an education. He gave me the opportunity. But then there was a group of old ladies that had white gloves on. Y'all remember them ladies? They had white gloves on. And they would hand me a $5. And they'd slit, shake my hand and give me $5. and said, baby, stay with the Lord. L-A-U-D. Stay with the Lord. I said, yes, ma'am. And guess which group won? The group that said go to hell or the group that said stay with the Lord? I'm here because of people like that. I'm here because of people that say, keep on keeping on. Don't turn around. Don't let nobody stop you. The Lord is on your side. You got to decide. I could discern those ladies had my best interest at heart. They weren't trying to make me look bad and feel bad. When I was, I used to sing in the choir. When I was singing in the choir, them old ladies would look at me with a crock eye. What you doing up there? I didn't care. I looked the other way and kept on singing. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to discern what is good for you. Amen. And you got to discern that some things are bad for you. Somebody say amen. amen. You got to discern the Lord is on your side. Somebody say the Lord is on my side. Amen. Somebody say the Lord is on my side. How do I develop my spirit of discernment? Meditate on the word day and night. Over and what? Over and what? Over again. The Lord is on my side. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. First Chronicles 12, 32, the Bible said that the children of Issachar were people that had understanding of the time and know what Israel ought to do. You got to discern that I'm doing the right thing. Somebody said, the Lord is on my side. Because the enemy in Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians 4, 4, the, the God of this world will blind their what? Mind. He want to blind you and get you off track. But I want you to know that you are the stakeholder of your destiny, of your future, and all the blessings of God that's going to come into your life. It is up to you. You benefit from investing in God's word, and he will open up your spirit of discernment, and you will see tomorrow when? Today. You will see tomorrow today. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Or Roberts used to say, if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. You got to see the Lord working in your life. You got to see that God is on your side. You got to see that you have favor. Somebody holler favor. You got you to see that you're not just coming to church for nothing. That it all works to your eternal salvation. You know, it all, it all helping you to build a better, a happier family. Somebody say amen. amen. How do we develop the spirit of discernment? Number two is pray every day and look at things with spiritual eyes. What's number two? Pray every day and look at things with what? Spiritual eyes. Some people, they, they, they are so carnal. They can see nothing spiritual in anything. But you got to look at things with spiritual eyes. And that's what prayer does. When you pray every day, God opens your eyes and he blesses you and he helps you. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, call unto me. I will what? 
answer you and I will what? Show you what? Great and mighty thing. Some kids don't see their dad and their mom until trouble hits their lives. The prodigal son was, had a phenomenal dad. The Bible doesn't tell us hardly anything about the father. Man, but he was a phenomenal dad. The boy got a few hairs on his chin and someplace else, and he rolled up on his dad and said, Hey, Dad, break me off my inheritance. I'm a grown man, dog. And that father said, Okay. You know, you're a grown man, so I'm going to... He went and gave him his inheritance. You know, what a, what a loving dad. How many of you would have given them their inheritance? You would have told him, get that. <laughs> he was a phenomenal dad. But not only that, he could discern that his son was making a bad decision. But he was a good dad. So he came and gave him his inheritance. And the boy, the Bible said, went off into a far country, got away from his dad. That's why sometimes let your kids go. They'll never see you until they get away from you. Oh, let, let, let me help somebody. Let, let, me, let, let me help somebody. Let me help somebody. Sometimes you got to let your daughter go. You got to let your son go. They won't see you until they get away from you. They won't see the value of you as a father until they have to make their own rent. Till they got to pay their own mortgage. Till they got to buy their own car. You gave them a car, maybe two cars. But until they get out there and got to make it on their own, they will say, my dad made a difference in my life. Ain't got no help up in here. But let me tell somebody, sometimes you got to let your kids go. They don't discern that you're a great dad. They don't discern that you are a phenomenal mom. The prodigal son got out there and he didn't discern that his dad was the best when he got out there and, 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 and started parting. If y'all can forgive me, when he got out there with all the hoes and they took all his money. Then he, got, he lost all his money to them girls and then he went and ended up broke. Somebody say broke. Ended up broke, then ended up in the pig pen. He didn't discern anything. The Bible says he came to his senses. Can I help somebody here today? Let me, let me pastor you for just a minute. The Bible says he came to his senses. And he says, I discern I'm in a bad place. I discern at my father's house. I didn't have to worry about nothing. I had the best at my dad's house. And he said, the people that work for my dad, they are living a good life. And I find myself in the pig pen. And he said, I discern. I'm going to get up out of here. And I'm going back to my father's house. And I'm going to fall on my knees and say, Dad, I'm sorry. I didn't discern you. I didn't see you. I didn't know you. Forgive me. And let me be one of your hired servants. Sometimes your kids don't see you. Until they get on their own. Until the money is cut off. That's when they see mama. Mama was always there for me. Mama was there to help me. Daddy was there to, to cover my back. I didn't have to worry about nothing. If I needed something, I'd go to daddy's garage and take it out. Don't even ask him for it. Oh, y'all ain't got no help in here. Somebody say amen. We got to teach our kids discernment that you got to see. Pray every day. Pray every day and look at things with spiritual eyes. When that prodigal son saw his dad with spiritual eyes, he got up. From the pig pen and the mud and all the pig poop. He said, I'm going back to my dad's house. I don't care how he treat me. I don't care what he says. Life is better under the anointing of a father. 
Let me help somebody. Life is better under the anointing of a father than to be out on your own. God has a covenant with mothers and fathers. And he's going to bless you if you stay under your mother and father's covenant as long as you can. And then when you get on your own, let them launch you. It's a whole nother sermon. How to launch your children. Let them launch you. Then you'll have success. They will hand you the baton at the head of the race. And you'll never get behind before. But all of us seen kids that did it on their own. Tried to run their own life. I want to move out of my mama's house. She don't want me coming in at 12.30 at night. No, you don't need to be out at 12.30 at night. Come home. A new set of demons come out after dark. And after midnight, a whole new group of demons come out. But we have to be people that have discernment. And we got to teach it to our kids. You got to discern what is good for you. You got to discern who is good for you. You got to discern who is good for you. And stay away from people that you know are bad for you. Somebody say amen. How do we develop either spiritual discernment? Number one, meditate on the word. And number two is what? Pray every day and look at things with spiritual eyes. Lord, I can see. Prayer opens your eyes. And it helps you be able what to what? See, I can see. Prayer opens your eyes. When that young man was in the pig pen down there, he was declaring, Lord, I need your help. And he started talking to God. Then his eye, the Bible said he came to his senses and his eyes were open. And he declared, I have made a horrible decision. I have messed up my life. Now I'm going back to my father's and trying to straighten it out. Some of you need to go back to your dad and work it out. So we need to go back to your mom and work it out. Now, if you don't have a dad, I understand that. But if your dad is alive, just call him up and say, hey, I'm just checking in. Don't ask for nothing. Just check in. Because the Bible says that if you honor your mother and your father. Woo! I know I'm on the right track now. I felt the Holy Ghost gave me a little unction there. I know I'm on the right track. If you honor your mother and your father, things will go well for you. But not only that, your days will be what? Long on the land which the Lord thy God give you. The reason why a lot of our kids are dying young. Oh, let me help y'all. Somebody, uh, the, ba, 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 ba. Let, let me help y'all. The reason why we're burying our kids in their young age. They dishonor their mother and their father. Ain't got no help up in here. Teach your kids to honor your mother and your father. You need to honor your mother and your father. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, they, 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 they treated you wrong. Because they didn't know how to be a mom. They didn't know how to be a dad. They were just out in the car turning it up. And you showed up. They don't know how to be a mother. They don't know how to be a father. So you got to let them off the hook. Somebody said let them off the hook. You got to let them off the hook. And just say, Lord, you're going to have to make it up to me. Somebody say amen. amen. Teach your kids to honor your mother and your father. And God, the God says, your days will be what? Long. Long and things will go well for you. We got to look with spiritual eyes. Raise your hand with me and let's pray. Everybody say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Say it again, Lord, open my eyes. That I might see in 2023. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. While we look not at things which are seen. But at things which are what? Not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. We have to see what others can't see. We have to know that God will reveal it to us. If we keep on serving the Lord, if we keep on praising the Lord, if we keep on singing to the Lord, if we keep on praying to the Lord, God will open your eyes and you'll be able to see. Somebody say amen. amen. How do we develop our spiritual uh, discernment and perception? Number one is what? Meditate on the word of God. Number two is what? 
pray every day and look at things with spiritual eyes. Look at things with spiritual eyes. When somebody sends you a text, don't just respond. Look at it with spiritual eyes. Pray about it in the name of Jesus. And then when you get discernment, gently respond with a gentle voice. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody hit you up with an email. Gently, gently respond in a nice, loving way. Don't be so quick to respond. Somebody say amen. And then I close with number three. How do we de de develop discernment in our lives? How do we develop spiritual discernment in our lives? Meditate on the word of God. Pray every day. And look at things with spiritual eyes. 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 Let's not be so, just see it with carnal perception. That's not enough. You got to look at it with spiritual eyes. Lord, what are you trying to show me? Lord, what are you trying to teach me through this? Lord, what are you developing in my life? Look at things with a spiritual eye. And when, when you are disobedient and disrespectful, sometimes trouble comes into your life. But you got to say, and then the Lord will show you it's your fault. You can't trust yourself. That's why the Bible says, lean not unto your what? In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge, and he shall. Number three, how do we develop discernment? Is the Holy Spirit will show you. The Holy Ghost will show you. Somebody say, he'll show you. Somebody say, he'll show you. He'll show you things to come. He'll show you. He'll lead you. Self must be disciplined. Self must be silenced. Self must be channeled in the right direction or to mess you up. You, you have to silence yourself. Sometimes I have to tell my brain, shut up. I'm, I'm okay now. I'm not mental. But sometimes, I don't know about y'all. Y'all See, y'all are saved, saved, sane, and sanctified. Y'all don't get no negative thoughts. Or crazy thoughts. I get crazy thoughts every now and then. So I lay in on my own head and cast the devil out of your mind. <laughs> Ephesians 4.23 says, be lifted in the spirit of your mind. And then I have to say, Holy Ghost, you need to help me. God, blow past. I'm driving the speed limit. And the guy blow past me and shoot me a bird. Then my brain just goes left. Take your car and ram him. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Am I the only one? Y'all help me out. Am I the only one? Yeah, thank you. I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not out here by myself. But Minister Lee, I have to tell myself, you can't do that. I have to say, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, help. Then I go a quarter of a mile, and boom, I pull right up beside him at the red light. Then I look over at him, and he won't even look at me. You got you to gotta check yourself. Tell your neighbor, check yourself. You got to check yourself. See, the Holy Ghost will show you things to come. You must conquer self. And we must, you must do all that you can to get a hold of your habits, your hobbies, and your hungers. You must do all that you can to not live an emotionally driven life. Or you'll not have discernment in your life. You'll mess up your life. Somebody said, don't mess up your life. Somebody said, don't mess up your life. See, the Holy Spirit always agrees with the word of God. When a scripture tells you, be kind one to another, the Holy Spirit agrees with that. And he'll tell you, just keep on going. Don't get upset. Just go on where you're going. This does not always agree with your flesh. Does not always agree with your thinking. The Holy Spirit does not always agree with your thinking. And so you got to say, Lord, I need your help. That's why you got to plead the blood every day. Somebody say the blood. blood. Every day you got to lay hands on your own head and say, Lord, I plead the blood. Come on, let's do it together. Everybody say, Lord, I plead the blood over my thinking. I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Every day you got to plead the blood over your life. And then you're, as you follow the Holy Spirit, then with discernment, you'll start seeing the fruit in your life. 
You'll start seeing the fruit in your kid's life. You'll start seeing the fruit in everything that you do. Somebody say amen. Then you'll have supernatural peace in your life with joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Then as you go through life, you can sense that I'm to turn right and not to turn left. Because now I have discernment. I can forecast that something good is going to happen in my life. How many of you ever sensed some time ago that something good was going to happen in your life and it happened? That's discernment working in your life. That's the spirit of the Lord leading you and guiding you. God helping you. Somebody say help. You can sense it. You can see it. You can discern it. You can declare it. You begin to speak it out of your mouth that everything is going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. Then you can perceive it and believe it that you are living by faith and the Lord is on my side. Somebody say the Lord is on my side. When you're looking for a job, you got to perceive that God's going to give you a good job. He's going to take care of you and he's going to help you. Somebody say amen. That's why you keep coming to church. You keep putting the Lord first. You keep serving the Lord and God will bless your life. I close with discernment is understanding. Spiritual understanding. That I discern that I'm going to stay with the Lord all year long. Somebody say all year long. And the Lord is going to bless my life. I discern. I discern that the Lord is working in my life. Therefore, I don't want to mess it up. Tell your neighbor, don't mess it up. There's an assurance and a knowing that things are going to work out. I don't know when and I don't know how. But God's going to work it out. There's an assurance in my life that I'm going to speak uh, spiritually and I'm going to declare over my life that no matter what happens, that the Lord is on my side. Somebody say, the Lord is on my side. I'm going to look for a good outcome because the Lord is working in my life. Somebody say, the Lord is working in my life. I'm going to make good decisions. I'm going to make destiny decisions. Because I discern the Lord is at work in my life. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. When your husband or your wife say something, I'm going to hold my peace. I'm not going to shout, shoot right back. I'm just going to be cool. Tell your neighbor, be cool. be cool. And don't always tell them and give them a piece of your mind. That's why people are going crazy. They've been giving people pieces of their mind. You got like, I need all my mind. Tell you, David, I need all my mind. I need all. Don't give them a piece of your mind. Somebody say, help. You got to declare it. You know, that with spiritual discernment, everything is going to be all right. The Lord's going to visit you in dreams this year. Don't go and tell nobody. Just pray about it. Just pray about it. Keep on praying about it. And he'll bring it to pass. Some people, as soon as they get a dream, I got a dream. No, you not don't tell it. Joseph told his dream and got thrown in the pit. Just be cool. Pray about it. Somebody said, pray about it. Somebody said, pray about it. God wants to guide your life. And he'll guide you through dreams. And he'll guide you through spiritual impressions. And he'll guide you through the spirit of discernment. And he'll guide you through the Holy Ghost working in your life. Psalm 32 and 8, this is the way, that Psalm 32 and 8, wait, th Psalm 32 and 8 said, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go, and I will guide you what? With mine eye. The Holy Spirit wants to guide your life. Don't be so quick to make the impromptu decision. Slow it down and pray it up. Somebody said, slow it down and pray it up. Give the Spirit of God the opportunity to work in your life. Your future is in your hands. And God will lead you by discerning, by discernment. And you have to discern the Lord is working in my life. So I'm not going to make no quick decision. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to meditate on his word. And I'm going to trust in the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Many Christians live beneath their privileges because they made quick decisions. Many ladies live beneath their privileges because they made quick decisions. Slow down. 
Slow down. Somebody said, slow down and pray it up. Slow down. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. And lean not unto your what? In all your ways do what? And, not, and he shall. He'll direct your path. He'll get you on the straight and narrow. He'll keep you going forward. He'll bless you when th times get tough. The Lord is on your side. Somebody raise your hand with the pastor and say, Lord, you are on my side. Say it again. Say, Lord, you are on my side. I am blessed. Come on, say it again. I am blessed. See, you got to speak it over your life. And sometimes you got in, in my car. I turn my music up real loud. And when my wife gets in, she goes, oh, turn it down, turn it down. <laughs> I turn my music up real loud, and I just yell, scream, the Lord is on my side. I turn it up. I turn up John P. Key. I turn up C.C. All my life, you've been faithful. Y'all heard that song. All my life, you've been faithful. I don't have time to be quiet. The Lord's been too good to me. When I couldn't make it by myself, the Lord was on my side. Is there anybody here that know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. Is there anybody online that know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have never made it. I'm so glad that the Lord is on my side. Somebody say, I am blessed. I can't afford to be quiet. You can't afford to be quiet. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You got to say something. Tell the Lord how good he's been. Declare to the Lord, you are my help. You are my shield. I would have never made it if it had not been. For the Lord who is on my side, you are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Come on, help me say, I am blessed. The Lord is on my side. Goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. God's got your back. Goodness and mercy is following you all the days of your life. God's got your back. You can't afford to be silent. You can't afford to be quiet. You can't afford to be serene. You got to cry out. Somebody shout help. Somebody shout help. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. I love Psalm 124. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Make it personal. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, you would have had to bury your son. You would have had to bury your daughter. But the Lord kept him alive. You are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. Say it again. I am blessed because the Lord's been good to me. When I look back over my life, I see the hand of the Lord. I can discern the Lord is my help. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody say thank you for all your help. Thank you for bringing us to the valley. Thank you for bringing us to poverty. Thank you for bringing us to situation. When you were broke, the Lord gave you money. When you were down, the Lord picked you up. You are blessed. Somebody say, I am Bless. Somebody say, I am blessed. Now give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Give the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. Thank you. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you. Thank you for all your favor. 
I am blessed. Sing with me. I am blessed. The Lord is on our side. Just give the Lord a praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He brought you from a mighty long way. In Jesus' name, somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you for all your help. We are blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. In Jesus' name, just give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Lord, for all your help. Stretch your elbow all the way up. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, thank you. I'm a part God's sovereign plan. Say it again with me. Say it with me. Everybody stand. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Everybody say, Lord, I am a part of the sovereign plan of Almighty God. I'm not an accident. I'm on your timetable. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you. I am blessed. Raise your hands all over the house. And everybody say with me, say, Lord, I rededicate. I recommit my life, my family, my children, all that I have to you. Thank you, Lord, for all your help. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry for times when I made a mess out of things. I'm sorry for times when I messed things up. But I recommit my life to the anointing of discernment. I can see. Open my eyes that I might see. Thank you, Lord, for all your help in my life. Say with me, say, Lord, thank you for all your blessings. I can, I can see. In Jesus' name I pray. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, I rededicate my life, my family, my children in every area of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say amen. Would you just give the Lord a hand clap? Thank you. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see all year long. Somebody say, open my eyes that I might see. Lord, don't let us go through life blind. Somebody say amen. Open my eyes. Open my eyes that I might see. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Every day, you got to say, open my eyes that I might see. Let's recommit our lives to perception, to discernment, to vision. All year long, God's going to bless you. Open your eyes that you might see. Somebody say, help me see, Lord, with spiritual eyes. If that is your prayer, Lord, help me to see it with spiritual eyes. Just come on down. Let's pray together. Come on down to the altar. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. I don't want to be blind. Too many of God's people are blind. Open my eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Open my eyes that I might see. It's a new year. You had a new place. Come on down. Thank you for coming. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my eyes that I might see. The enemy is depending on you being blind. That's how he's going to take advantage of you. By you being blind, open my eyes that I might see. Everybody say with me, say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Too many Christians are blind today. We got to open our eyes, Lord. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Gently lay your hand on somebody's shoulder. Gently lay your hand on somebody's shoulder. Open my eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes.
Don't let us go through life blind. Jesus said the blind lead the blind and they both going to fall in the ditch. It's 2023. Open our eyes so that we can see. And everybody serve me. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see all year long. The blood. Come on, say it with me. The blood. The blood of our vision. The blood of our eyes. The blood of our perception. The blood of our discernment. The blood of our insight. Thank you. I can see. Everybody say with me. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Now raise your hand with me and say, Lord, stretch your elbow all the way up and say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Thank you that I can see with spiritual eyes my future my destiny my purpose the plan you have for my life i can see open my eyes that i might see thank you lord the blood the blood of jesus over my eyes everybody say the blood of jesus come on lay hands on your eyes the blood of jesus i can see no more blindness Oh, I can see on Zoom, on live stream. Lay hands on your eyes. The blood. The enemy want to destroy you by vision. The blood. Somebody shout. The blood. The blood of Jesus. Open my eyes that I might see. In Jesus' name I pray. Turn around and give somebody a hug and say, I see you. 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 I can see you. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on to your mic and let's see. Thank you, Lord. Thank Lord, raise your hands and help me say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I just want to thank. Say it again. I just want to. I just want to thank one more time. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands. Lord, thank you. Thank you for vision. Thank you for insight. Thank you for perception. Oh, thank you for discernment. Thank you, Lord, that I can see. Somebody say, I can see. In Jesus' name I pray, you may be seated in the house of the Lord. The Bible says in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other name. For there is none other name given under heaven, whereby men must be saved. But by the name of Jesus, Jesus, thank you Jesus. Jesus, he is the bread of heaven. He is the bread of life. He is the one that makes all the difference in our lives. He is Jesus, the bread of heaven. Somebody say, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He is the bread of heaven. Acts 2.21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be what? Say, Jesus. It still works. We want to kick him out of our society. But it still works. Jesus. Jesus, I got saved calling on the Lord on a Thursday night. Je they said, baby, call it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But now we are so prosperous that we don't want to say the name of Jesus. You sit by the, somebody on the plane, you don't want to say nothing about Jesus. 
But I got saved on the altar on a Thursday night. They said, baby, the ladies with the white glove, call it Jesus. Jesus. Anybody remember those days? Jesus. Help me call it. Jesus. You got a loved one that need to be saved. Stand up with me right now. Let's call on Jesus. Save them, Lord. Unless Jesus do it, they won't be saved. Unless Jesus touched their heart, it won't be saved. Jesus, there's still power. He said that if you call on the name, whosoever shall call on the name of Jesus shall be what? Saved. saved. You got loved ones that need to be saved? Call and raise your hand with me. And everybody, let's just take a minute and call Jesus. Jesus, whoever it is, a niece, Jesus, a nephew, Jesus, an uncle, Jesus, a cousin, Jesus, a co-worker, Jesus, Jesus, somebody say, Jesus, Lord, save him, save him, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Raise your hand with me and say, Lord, save them by your power. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, save them by your power. Somebody say, Lord, save them by your power. Somebody say, Jesus, Jesus, save them, Lord. We commit them into your hands. Draw them near. Send someone in their path. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody say, Jesus. It's all right. It's going to be all right. God's going to save them. You keep praying for them. You keep calling their name. Every time you call their name, just say what? Jesus. Just call their name. Call their names all week long, and God's going to save them. He's going to turn it around may not happen overnight and it may not happen instantly but little by little Jesus is going to turn their lives around somebody say turn them around Lord somebody say turn them around turn them around save them let's rededicate this new year everybody say put your elbow all the way up and everybody say Lord I rededicate I recommit my life my family all my children to you I am blessed I rededicate all that I have to the kingdom of God in Jesus name I pray amen can we sing a little bit of that Jesus 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 at the mention of the name at the mention all the difference in our lives. Somebody say amen. God loves you. He has a plan for your life and it's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. I, I, I believe it by discernment that it's going to be all right. Somebody say it's going to be all right. God is going to bless you. Go with me to Luke 638. Luke 638. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you when? Again. God is going to bless you. And God's going to help you financially. 
this year he's going to take care of you. Some time ago, I came home from a Wednesday night service, and I drove up to my house, and I said, Lord, help me to pay off my house in the name of Jesus. And I just said, Lord, I need your help. I said, I can't do it on the pastor's salary. I got to have supernatural help. Somebody say supernatural help. And I just said, Lord, I sat there in the garage. I sat there in front of my house for a minute. And I just said, Lord, I need your help. Somebody say, help. And then I heard the Lord clearly. I had my music off. I heard the Lord said, no bill can live in your life if you serve me. You can't beat God given. No bill can live in your life if you serve me. I accepted those words in my heart, one in my house. Then I came to church and I started saying that. You heard me say it. No bill can live in your life when you serve the Lord. Everybody didn't grab it. Some people would say it's just a phrase. Some people would say it's just something pastors say. But some people got a hold of it. They stored it in their hearts, carried it in their spirit, and they declared to their bills, no bill can live in my life. Where you at, Baco? Come help me out. See, I'm not up here just saying something. I give my life to the Lord. Valentine's Day is coming up. I want to take my wife to Cameroon. But I'm not. It's out of the country. And I don't know nobody in Cameroon. Somebody say amen. But I declare in your life, no bill can what? In your life. A couple Sundays ago, Baco and his wife came up to me. And they said, Pastor, I have something I want to show you. Oh, this is funny. And uh, uh, Joe, I want you to take your time and articulate. Not too long now. No. Let Jeannie say something because she's she's got the anointing on her life. Is it on yet? Is it on? Is it on? It's not on. It's not on. It's not on. What's wrong with it? Testing. So when I said no bill can live in your life. You guys received it. Yes, we did. Like I said, it's funny. And last two weeks ago, I received a letter. That one was Saturday. And then uh, I opened the letter. And uh, hmm, I read. I turn back, I read. And then it says, my wife and I, we have a loan student loan. My wife has uh, one, 154950 as a student loan. 154000 in student loans. A student loan. It, that one is included. Lawrence, who... Your uh, daughters? Yes. Your kids? Yes. So, well, everything is on Gina name. Because I already have some. I got two loans. One is already paid off. The second one, I still have 34000 on it. So I'm paying monthly. So when I saw this one, I say, what about me? <laughs> so uh, it says, congratulations. Your 154950 Hold on. Your 154900 and fifty dollar and thirty four cents has been canceled. Canceled. No bill. No bill. You watching me by live stream? No bill huh? can live in your life. Yeah. Gone. Hundred and fifty four thousand. That's what some of you paid for your house. God is a good God. Somebody say God is a good God. Give your wife your microphone. R raise your hands and let's pray over this into the lives of the people by live stream and those that are here. That no bill.
can live in your life. And God said to me, I'm reminding you what you asked me that night about your house. That no bill can live in your life. Minister Jeannie Bacher, Baco is going to lead us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Yes. We give you praise. We honor you. Yes. We stand on your word. You promise that no bill will live. You promise that our finance will be aligned if we follow your word. Yes. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you. As we call in upon your name, as we stand in on your word, Father. Yes. No bill will live no in our bill. life, Father. You will pay it off, Father. If you did it for me, you can do it for all of us. Yes. We believe your word. We believe in your word and we stand in your word. Proclaiming, Father, that no bill will live. No bill. That you take care of our bill. You say you you have the the hundred thousand car cattle on the hills. Yes. Tell them and pay our bills, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praise and glory. We yes. honor you. In your mighty name, we pray and receive it. Jesus. Amen. amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. No bill can live. Raise your hand with me and everybody say it. Say it. Lord, I declare no bill can live in my life. I am debt free. Say it again. No bill can live in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you, Bacchus. God is good. God is good. You may be seated. Let's just come forward. Give everybody an envelope this morning. The Bible is right. No bill. You can't be God given. You can't be God given. The very breath that He gives, man, makes all the difference in your life. Let your let your heart skip a beat, and you'll be in a bad place. Somebody say Amen. And that's why we pray and ask God for help. Somebody say help. We did. We decree that no bill can live in your life. So I made up my mind. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to be a tither all the days of my life. And I'm going to decree that no bill is going to live in my life. And I'm going to celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody say amen. He is the bread of life. He makes all the difference in our lives. Somebody say amen. No bill can live in your life. Don't be intimidated. Just work, pay, and keep on trusting in the Lord. And make sure that you partner with God in your time. Somebody say amen. It's not about money. It's about faith. It's about trust. God, I trust you. I believe that you're going to help me. That I declare no bill can live in my life. Jesus says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and what? Running over. Somebody say amen. Jesus teaching his disciples to give. He, to give. he says, ask and you shall what? Receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be what? open unto you. And so I want to encourage you. People of faith, put God first in your finances. Put him first in your finances and then declare every day. When you sit down, husband and wife together to write your bills, just declare no bill can live. The Lord's going to pay it off. Somebody say no bill can live. And partner with God. Partner with God and he'll bless your life. Let us, if you're making out a check, make it payable to Emmanuel Christian Center or ECC. You get record of your giving, but not only that, you are making a statement to the spirit world that no bill is going to live in my life. Psalm 65 and 11 says, I crown the year with my goodness. Good things going to happen to you financially. Psalm 68, 19 says, daily, I load you with my benefits. Daily, I load you with my benefits. And then Psalm 66 and 1 says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I thank you that I got seed to sow. I got seed to sow. Somebody say amen. Stand up with me and let's pray again. I magnify your name. And that's why my heart is filled with praise. Hold your gifts up to the Lord and everybody say with me. Say, Lord, I declare no bill can live in my life. 
every bill is paid off. My house, my car, furniture, credit cards, student loans, no bill can live in my life. I partner with you. I give into your kingdom. I realize I can't beat you giving. So I give into your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Somebody save me. If you're giving, come and lay it on the altar as an act of faith. I love somebody give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness let us all stand thank you for being here today go forward and know that the Lord is going to give you discernment and it's going to be all right somebody say it's going to be all right somebody say it's going to be all right God is on your side and everything is going to be all right somebody say it's going to be all right before we go Jordan I need you to go get Eliza it's her birthday and I have to bless her somebody go get my grandbaby she and Judah, they came to me some time ago and said, Grampy, we want to sing. I said, oh, no. Not on, the, not on my platform. And they said, we want to sing. And then uh, I said, no, no, I don't want y'all getting up there acting up. And I don't want y'all getting up there embarrassing me. And uh, they said, we won't do that. We'll do good. So they got up and they sang. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a chance one Sunday. So they did, sang, and, uh, and they did good. They, didn't, they did what they were supposed to do. Come here, Lies. And, uh, and all during the pandemic, every Sunday and every Wednesday, she got up and sang, her and Judah. And there were days when it was just Eliza, Judah, Elder Harris, Jordan, and maybe one person in the choir, yeah. Minister Teresa. They carried us through. And Liza, listen to me. I'm not talking to you as grampy today. I'm talking to you as your pastor. Stay with the Lord. Always sing for God. As you grow, God's going to anoint your diaphragms. And he's going to anoint your vocal cords. And your voice is going to sound really good. Amen. Stay with the Lord. Don't go out singing in clubs. Don't go out singing at juke joints. Sing in the Lord's house. God gave Whitney Houston her voice at about your age. But she left the Lord and she sang for the devil. Don't do that, okay? 
So I want you to know we love you. So proud of you. And just know the Lord is on your side. Thank you for being faithful in church. So we anoint you with oil. Stay with the Lord. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to bless her. Protect her. As she grow in her faith. May she have her own faith and trust in you. And we just love you. And we appreciate you. We ask you to take her to places where your voice is not heard. Take her to places where the light shines dim. And she will light up the house with the voice that you gave her. We bless her on this day. We bless her going out and her coming in. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for all your help. Keep her and protect her from all hurt, harm, and danger and predators. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap. We love you, guys. We love you. God is a good God. Be here. Ella Harris, come and pronounce the blessing. Be here on Wednesday night. We're going to just sing to the Lord. God loves good singing. David was a man after God's heart because he sang to the Lord out in the field, taking care of the sheep. He played his heart, heart, and he just sang to the Lord. And God took him all the way to the top. We've lost the art and we've lost the importance of what it means to sing to God. Paul and Silas was in prison. And they sang to God. And guess what? God got happy, stood up on his throne and started patting his feet. And the door swung wide open. You want your life to change? Start singing to God. For those of you that used to sing in the choir, let me encourage you. Come back to the choir. We're going to bless you. The Lord's going to bless you. Somebody say amen. And God's going to help you. Somebody say help. Raise your hand with this pastor. Everybody say, Lord, thank you. I can see that everything is going to be all right. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, thank you. I can see that everything is going to be all right. In Jesus' name I pray. I'll see you on Wednesday night and on Sunday for our anniversary. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons saying on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel saying unto them the Lord bless thee and keep thee the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and upon the sons and the daughters of Emmanuel and I will bless them. Father, we have heard the word today of developing supernatural perception. Oh God, help us to meditate on your word every day, Father. Help us to pray every day and see things with spiritual eyes, oh God, that we might see in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we want to know the voice of the Holy Spirit so that he can guide us down through the pathway of light and show us what direction to go. Lord, show us. Reveal yourself to us, oh God. And God, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the people on Zoom, those on live stream, those in your house. Lord, protect them and keep them as they leave this place. And we'll forever give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in to the Emmanuel Christian Center live stream. You have a blessed week. Every praise is to our God, so continue to praise God as we go through our week, and we'll see you at the musical this Wednesday night. Amen.